Howdy YouTube, Mark DeRemer here from Refurbished Gentleman, and today on RGTV, you're gonna be watching a step-by-step -step tutorial of one of my finishes. Although this finish is about three to four years old, and some of the products, if not all of the products within the video are products I no longer use. So what you're gonna see is in the video description below and throughout the video, for the supplies used, I'm going to give you what I recommend currently. The main reason for that is if you contact me and say, hey Mark, I'm working through your finish and I just, it's whatever you said to do is not working. If you use what I recommend, it's gonna be easier for me to help you walk through those steps. If you use some of these older products that I no longer use, it'll be harder for me because some products change, they change their formulas, all that different kind of things. It just makes it harder for me to walk through it with you. Does that mean you can't use your products or the products within the video? No, but I just wanted to be clear before you jump into the video that what's actually in the video is not gonna be what I recommend based on those facts. So I hope you enjoy the video. I look forward to seeing anything that you guys create from this and be sure to tag Refurbished Gentlemen on all my social media if you do decide to try it. So to start off the French castle finish, we're gonna start with some French linen. Um, I name all my finishes just to make it easier for me to distinguish between what I've done for my clients and stuff like that. Um, this one happened to be French Castle. Just to, how it ended up turning out, it started off with French linen base, so French. And then it had a very kind of cool stone-like castle look. So I named it French Castle. So first things first, your French linen base coat, which is probably one of the best uh, probably is my best selling base coat um, and very versatile you could go black over top of this you can go brown over top of this you can you know do other colors with it I mean it's just just a really really cool color and it kind of takes the shade of what you're doing with it I, I think it turns more gray when I add black to it and I think it turns more of uh, a brown color when I add the dark wax to it so it's just kind of one of those cool colors where you can really play with it and uh, make it something unique every time you use it so again we're just doing a base coat of French linen um, French linen covers really well so it would probably only take you two coats more than likely depending on what you're uh, going over top of this is a lighter colored wood piece, so I'm going to assume two, two layers, and we'll be ready for the waxing steps. And with these beautiful Ames Long brushes, make it so, so easy. Paint really stays on the brush and goes a super long way. So, definitely worth getting if you don't have any. Alright, so that's it. So we got just one coat so far. Um, I'll let you know how many coats it took to complete. Uh, next step will be the clear wax. Um, well, actually, I take that back. We're going to do the dry brush on this one so it's a pure white dry brush and then we're going to distress and then we'll get to the clear wax so again we're going to do our base coat make sure i don't have any wet spots in there our base coat and i'll let you know how many coats it takes and then on to the dry brush after. okay so we got the base coat done we got two coats french linen and now we're going to do the dry brush. Um, dry brush, it just depends on what you're using it for. A lot of times people use dry brush on some really accented areas where you want to highlight the, the raised areas. And that's kind of what I'm doing with this piece because there's some really cool raised areas which you'll see in the final pictures um, for it. But also I'm going to do it on the flat areas too. And the way I'm using it in this technique is as like uh, to give it more texture, more depth to it. Because a lot of times, like as you see, just one color is super flat, right? 
And then you can add some um, wax in the corners and edges, but the flat areas are still just flat and gross and there's not a lot going on. Maybe that's what you want for your piece, maybe not, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. For me, <clears throat> I like to do layers, different text, different um, finishes, um, different things for each layer of color, just because it just, I don't know, it gives it something more to it, I think, anyway. So for this uh, effect that I'm going for, uh, kind of giving it like, it's called French Castle, so like a stone kind of look to it. So we're gonna do the white dry brush over top, and I'm gonna do, obviously, the raised areas all along these edges is gonna get a little white, and then I'm gonna do some across, and when I do it lightly across the flat areas, you'll see my brush strokes which is kind of what I'm going to be looking for. And then of course, all around the edges too. Now, you know, a lot of times you're gonna, if you're gonna distress a piece, the raised areas are the pieces that are gonna get scratched away. Well, you're thinking, well, why are you gonna dry brush the raised areas if you're just gonna distress them away? But you'll distress some away. Some of the white that I'm gonna take time to paint on here is gonna get distressed away, but there'll be some that doesn't. So again, some different layers to it. So you'll have a base coat, you'll have a dry brush, you'll have the distressed area, and then you're gonna have dark wax over top of it. So like four different layers of just cool texture and um, uniqueness to it, rather than just a base coat and some wax. And what I found is that, you know, people really enjoy that. They have, you know, something unique and different all throughout the piece. So there'll be some piece parts where it'll still have some white, some won't. Um, so, for the next, this next step, I'm actually going to zoom in so you can see just how the dry brush happens because from you know a couple feet away you might not be able to really see how gently you're going to do it. So you just need a small brush. I use a flat, straight instead of the Amy Sloan style because you want better control over the straight area that you're going to be just like gently dragging across. And that's pretty much what it's going to be. It's just a gentle drag across with very, very little paint, which uh, thankfully I'm almost out of my pure white right now. So I only need a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in and then we're gonna get on to this next step. And then after I get this done, then it'll be to the distressing piece of it and then clear and dark wax. Okay, so now we're going to the dry brush piece. And as I said, I was gonna zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna try to show you how I do this. So we got pure white, I got my paintbrush. I'm going to dip it down into the bottom. As you see, I am almost completely out. So I'm just going to dip it down in there, get down to the bottom, and I'll even show you the paintbrush. See, it's just a teeny tiny little bit. Now, one side got a little bit more than the other, which is no big deal. And then what you're going to do, and this is just how I do it. You can do it any way you, you really choose to, but you put it down on a paper towel, and that's what I use. And what I'm trying to do is evenly distribute the most minute amount of paint across the tips of this paintbrush as I can. So, as you see, I got a, a bigger glob here where I initially wiped it off, and then as I dragged it across the paper towel, less and less stayed on. And let's we'll go over here to the side, take a little bit more off. And you definitely don't want, see there's a big glob sneaking in there try to get as much of it off. So you're gonna have basically like a dry brush. It's almost, there's almost no paint on there. And that's why it's called dry brush technique. Because you're just using a brush that's not gonna have a lot of wet paint all over it. Because all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush and you're gonna just drag it gently over the edge. Just like this. Oh, so gently. Now it's totally up to you. You want a lot or a little bit. Throughout this piece, I'm gonna have like spots like this that's a little bit and a big spot like that. Um, so it's just, it's all based on what you wanna do. Now you see when I'm dragging it across here, it's getting just the raised areas, which is cool. So and as you can, I'm not sure how well you can see it in the video, but you can see my brush strokes through here. So basically, I'm gonna just do this all the way around. So I'm gonna turn this thing around this way. I'm gonna get the corners up this way. And around 
the side. And again, you're just gently dragging it. Now, as you do this, the paint will come off of the paintbrush and you have to press a little harder to get what paint is still left on there off. So it's just a matter of trial and error. This is definitely a technique I would not do on a piece that you're, you know, looking to sell if it's your first time ever. I probably would practice this because as you can see over here, got a little heavy. You know, and a lot of times dry brush, you're probably not going to want to have these heavy spots. But for me, with what I'm doing with this, there's going to be heavy and light spots with the dry brush throughout. So I'm not too, too worried about any little heavy spots that I happen to get here and there. So again, you're just dragging it across. You flip your brush over, you might have a little bit more or less paint on the other side of it. And you just do this all the way around until you get it where you like. So right now, it's looking pretty good. And you see I'm having to press a little bit harder because my paint's starting to disappear. Oh, so that one spot. So now I have all these cool brush strokes in, on the flat area. So now you got to be real careful on your flat areas because you might not want a lot of paint. So I'm just going to go with the grain of how I painted it and just add some really cool dry brushed lines in there. And I'm eventually going to put dark wax on this so it's going to cover a lot of it up. But it's just to add another little layer of something to it. And then you got to imagine raised areas. Maybe you have a real cool accents on a piece where it's got some cool raised areas. Just dragging it over the, the raised part and how that's going to look. It's going to give it a little bit of just depth, I guess. But that's it. That's all there is to it, really. And you just kind of look around, make sure there's no spots you missed that you think you need to hit. I'm pretty happy with that. So the French linen is kind of a mid-tone, the white's kind of a bright, and then I'm going to go dark with a dark wax. So I'm going to have a, some layering going on and then the distressing on top of it. It's really going to give it a cool look. So that's it. That's dry brush. Now, like I said, I mean, there's, that was a little heavier probably, but it's a lot of flat areas. <clears throat> so I definitely would play with this technique and see how exactly you want it. For this, this is what I was going for. Some heavy, some light areas all throughout. So that's it. And our next step is going to be distressing, which uh, probably do some outside and some in here. And uh, I'll show you that next. Okay, our next step is distressing. I've already done the distressing on the big piece and all the drawers. I take it outside um, just because it's a lot of dust in my house and it gets all over the place. So it's already done, but I, I want to show you how exactly I got it to look like this. Um, so basically, as you can see, you know, I did the corners. This was uh, pretty close to a heavy distress. For me, it's light, medium, heavy kind of thing. Light being just corners and edges, uh, medium being corners, edges, some flat areas, and heavy is where I really dig in and bring back out the wood. Um, so this is more of a medium, close to a heavy uh, style for me. Um, but all the edges, all the corners, corners dug in a little bit, to bring get all the way down through the original finish to the wood and a couple little flat areas and I did that throughout so the two things I used <clears throat> sanding block and a sheet by itself this is a uh, it'll be in the list of stuff but it's 3m it's a 220 sanding paper what kind you use really doesn't matter um, it's just you know the finer it is the harder you got to press you know vice versa so I start out with the, the block and the big reason for that is the corners I wanted to dig in I wanted to get down to the wood so I start in the corners and basically what I do is I just press and go outward press and go outward press and go outward so I'm not getting any of the sides but just really digging into the corner so I'm doing that in each corner like that 
all the way around. And then on the flat areas, the long flat areas, I'm just going to do the raised flat areas right now with this because I can't really get down into the recessed raised areas without digging into spots I don't want sanded. So just gently over top of this, depending on what kind of sandpaper you have, gently hard, depend, just depends on what you're going to do. So like that, okay? And then you're going to get your paper out here like this. And because it's this flexible, really cool kind, you can wrap it right around your finger and you can dig down in and swipe across those raised areas down in and just get those areas. So I go down there and I get those. So I'm just, again, just gently dragging until I get the look I want. And again, distressing is kind of, uh, it's really where you can get artistic with it because it's all on what your eye sees and how you think it should look for whatever finish that you want it to be. Um, unless you're doing it for a client and then in which case then you kind of go with what your client wants. And then at the very end, I did do some flat areas and I used my block for that. And basically I just take a corner of the block and I go with the grain, just like that, just like that. And then I might go back in, like if I dug down too deep into the paint and there's like almost like a step from the wood to the paint, I'll blend it with just this piece like this. Again, wrapping it around my finger and just kind of gently going over it so it blends. So there's not like I dug down into the paint. It's more of a flat, smoothed out area of where that paint is. And I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but you can see this hasn't been waxed yet. So the French linen, when you sand it, it gets lighter. So it's a gradual from the darker base coat French linen through the sand, partly sanded down to the deeply sanded. So it's a gradual, so there's not big divots or scratch look. You don't want it to look scratched, you want it to look distressed. So you want to kind of blend it together. So that's going to be it for this step. And uh, like I said, I do this outside. You can do it inside, I have done it inside before. You're going to want to keep a vacuum cleaner handy and maybe on while you're doing it if you're going to do that. I wouldn't suggest it. I go outside, um, my trick, uh, it's kind of funny, but what I use is my leaf blower. Yes, a leaf blower. I'll take this right out of my little front porch area, do all the distressing I gotta do, get my leaf blower out, and blow all the paint dust off and off into the wind out in my yard. The grass can have it. It's not in my house anymore. And it really works good. Um, saves you having to get it like where you're breathing it in, you're just blowing it away. Um, but it works great. So little trick, um, if you're trying to just sand the stuff and get rid of it quickly, leaf floor works great. So this is it for this step. And then we're gonna go on to clearing, clear waxing, which will even this color with the French linen back out and then the dark wax uh, to do some, just another layer. So we're gonna have kind of a four layer thing going on. French linen, the white dry brush, the distressed areas, and then the brown wax to finish it up. And that's it. Howdy, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. And if you are, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know next time I add some new content. And please, please, please share. The biggest thing about my uh, or motto or whatever you want to call it is create, share, inspire. And that's what I'm trying to do. Create content to inspire people to start painting, to try new things, and just maybe step outside their comfort zone. So if you are enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe button, which will ultimately help me grow my channel and in turn allow me to reach more people. All right, now we're on to the fun part, the waxing. So we're gonna initially, we're going to clear wax it. Um, we're gonna do some dark wax after this. So that's your key step, is that clear wax, both to protect your paint um, and to give you that barrier between the paint and your dark wax so you can pull back off any dark wax that you want to pull off. So again, Annie Stone, amazing wax brush. And I'm just gonna dig it in here, get it all in. And what's cool about the French linen is gonna darken it up just simply by adding some clear wax to it, which is 
good for me and the purposes of what I'm trying to do with this French castle finish. So really just going to slap it on there and that's like I said what's cool about the French linen is you're going to see that you're putting on the wax. You're going to see it transition from that light gray to not even a dark gray but definitely a deeper color than what it was previous. So you, that's your, kind of your indication that you got full coverage of your wax. Um, it's not cheap, the wax, but um, my little hint to people is don't go light on it. I mean, go a little heavier than probably you would think just because it's just going to save you time and any blotchiness you might get because I know when I first started using it, I was trying to like put a little thin layer and what ended up happening is that I have the, the kind of blotchy look where spots look like they got waxed and other spots didn't. And it was just because I wasn't getting enough of a good layer of wax on it initially. Because after I figured that out, then it started looking good every time. So that's it. Just slapping it on there real good. For this instance, I got my shop towels all folded up. You know, shop towel fold them that we can unfold them and use continuously throughout so just prep them have them ready so again we're just wiping one direction just to try to get that first little layer off nice even wipes so you can see and ensure your wax is on there the way you want it to and it'll rip and it'll tear a little bit. Just kind of fold it over or whatever. And again, just kind of going. You don't press too hard. You're just kind of wiping it off. Get down in there and make sure you don't have any caked on. Especially if you're going to do a dark wax next. You don't want to have caked on corners of wax. Like in these corner spots, you don't want that. Because then you're going to put dark wax on top of it. And the dark wax will, will not really stay there well because the clear wax is kind of like an eraser. So this is why you fold your, so you can go ahead and go, okay, well, I'm done with that side. I'm going to unfold it and use this side. And then when you're done with that side all together, you can unfold it and refold it from the opposite side. So you're not wasting shop towels because, I mean, ultimately, you're just going to throw them away. So rather than going through a ton of them, Definitely fold them and use the reverse side of it. So anyways, that's going to be it for clear wax. And the next step, like I said, is going to be the dark wax. And what I like to do is hit the corners real good, inside the edges, all around, and then I leave the center kind of that base coat color and have it blend out. And that's primarily the way I do it, and in particular for this, case it's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Then I'll hit the outside a little bit just to give it some color. So that's clear wax for now. Next will be dark wax. Okay, our last step for the French castle finish is going to be, well, that's almost the last step. I take that back. There's one little trick at the end I'm going to show you. So right now we're going to do dark wax. So for me, dark wax or any of the accenting waxes can be done different ways. But when you're trying to put it on where you want it to cover and be, I don't know, the best way to describe it is where you're gliding it on and you know later I can pull it right back off. Sometimes when you pull the wax right out of the can, it's harder, it's thicker, it sticks, no matter whether you clear wax or not, it makes it just harder to pull back off. So what I do is I do a glaze. So what I have here, and I'll, hopefully you can see it in the, the video, this is a uh, dark wax glaze. And it, it's kind of clumpy, but that doesn't really matter too much. But it'll, it's basically your dark wax mixed with mineral spirits. And the consistency you're looking for is like a cake batter or toothpaste I've heard from people. I think cake batter is probably more along the lines of what I end up with when I do it. Um, 
And what this is going to allow for is when you paint it on or brush it on, it's going to glide right on without it sticking. And that's probably the best way. There's less um, friction. That's the word I'm looking for. Less friction when you're putting it on so it glides right on real smooth. Instead of like when you're getting it out of the can, a lot of times there's that friction where it sticks and it hits. And then you have a big clump here and then nothing over here. This will be more of an even thing. And also, it's mixed with mineral spirit, so think about pulling it off after, which is going to be the next step. Um, you can see how well it comes off. Alright, so I'm going to dip a little bit. So how I do this, as I mentioned, I'm going to hit the corners. So for me, I hit each corner first, because that's where, in any, for antiquing a piece, I mean, the natural spots for a piece to look antiqued if it, you're not doing it yourself is in the corners. Where dust is going to gather, dirt's going to gather. So I hit the corners and make them the darkest first. And then from there, I drag along the edges. And for those that are watching this that have never used dark wax before, you're probably freaking out like, holy crap, what are you doing to your piece? And yeah, that's exactly what I said the first time I ever used it. Like, why are you smearing this brown stuff all over your piece you just spent all that time painting? And you'll see why here in a second. So again, we're just hitting the corners and taking what we put in the corners and pulling it across, pulling it across, and going back and forth. And that's really a trick to get it into the grooves is continue go back and forth, back and forth, because as you're pulling it back and forth, it'll push it down to the end of the brush, and getting it down to the end of the brush is what will get it in the cracks real good. So you just do that all the way around. And then for me, the way I like to do it, let me get on this side is pull from the edge, pull from the edge, pull from the edge like that. And have that kind of stroked look. So I'm pulling from the edge going down and finishing my stroke towards the center. And if I'm doing it this way, obviously it would be up. And I like to have a, that finished, so it's not like a hard line. But I'll blend it all in next when I pull it back off. So I'm gonna just go all the way around all the edges Hit it with a little bit, not too much. So I'm not trying to have brown edges. I just want it to have a little bit of the brown color. So it blends all the way around. Okay, so there's the brown wax. Now, the trick is, first and foremost, we gotta blend it. So I'll get it on my shop towels. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna use cotton. Um, this is uh, just a cut up t-shirt. Um, you want to shake it out, make sure you get all the lint off at first, but um, I'm going to use this basically because I've already used it for the whole piece and it's got a good amount of the, the dark wax on it that I can also use to help me blend. Because I don't want to pull the wax completely off because I want to have some of the wax on there. So as you can see, I'm just going to pull in the direction that I want it to go. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing coming up this way. Leaving that center area where I have base coat, which is how I like to do it. I mean, it's to each his own. However you want to finish it out is, is totally up to you. And when you're using this, you're going to have to fold it over by another spot. But with the, the cotton, it'll soak down in so it'll work a little bit better than the shop towel for this aspect because you can continuously use the same one. So I'm hitting the raised areas real good, pulling that dark wax back off, but leaving a little bit of a brown streak, which is helpful by having a cotton something that has some of the wax still on it. Go all around the outside edges. Make sure I'm blending that in real good. You see, because we clear wax first, it's pulling off, and you can blend it in real good, just leaving like some streaks of brown, which is exactly what I want. And we can 
pretty good. Okay, so now on the inside, that's where it gets a little tricky because you have the cracks and crevices, so you probably want to take like a small part of your rag, maybe through a finger of some sort, and have a nice flat edge and just get the raised areas because you do want to leave some of that brown wax down in the crack. So you don't want to ball up your rag and wipe it all away. You just want those raised edges. Since I had dry brushed this white prior to doing the dark wax, that now that white dry brush is a, a, kind of turned into a tan color, which I, I might like in some spots to have the blend through of the different browns, but some spots I want to bring that white back out. So this is the final little trick that I do that brings back out my dry brush spots that I like on the raised areas. So it's just another tone to it. So I'm going to take shop towel that I have some clear wax already rubbed on. And I'm going to go over these edges and just wipe that dark wax off and bring back out the white. And you can dip this back in your can if you need to and get some more clear wax. But ultimately you just get a little bit and don't dip this back in your clear wax. You know, um, want it it's dirty like this get some more um, flip it over to a clear spot and then do that and then again just go over your spots where you want to bring back out the white for that dry brushed areas and I like to do this just because it's just like I said about doing the dry brush it's just another little layer to add to it because you can do a base coat in brown wax all day but to add some dry brush throughout just gives it a little bit more texture, layered look that I really enjoy. So that's looking pretty good. So that's going to be it. This is French Castle. Again, it's going to be French linen base with a pure white dry brush. And then I distressed it with about a medium distress, hitting corners, edges, and some flat areas. Then I did a brown wax glaze or dark wax glaze and then at the, well I clear waxed it first, clear wax, then dark wax and then at the very end I went back over it with some clear wax to bring out some of my white spots. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, you learned something and ultimately at the end of the day get inspired to try it. I really hope you do. If you do be sure to tag refurbished gentleman on Instagram and or Facebook and just let me know let me see what you've done and of course if you have questions drop them in the comments down below or you can find me on Facebook on a more day-to-day -day basis uh, please 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 subscribe share this content out if you did enjoy it and last but not least if you do decide to utilize the um, products that I'm currently using that I'm recommending to duplicate this finish You'll find everything in the links down below. They're all affiliate links and those affiliate links will continue to support me and allow me to provide free content for you. And in some cases, I do have discount codes from the companies that I work with that allow you to get a little bit extra something off of your final purchase. So all those things are at no cost to you, but they do help me in the end continue to do what I love to do. So everybody have a blessed day and as always, happy painting.